Good morning, my boys and girls at home. This is Teacher Stephen taking you through science class 6 today. Being our first online lesson, today we are going to discuss about animals. But before that, remember I've come with my textbook, my sanitizer, my whiteboard, pens, and before anything I have to sanitize my hands because you are aware that corona is real, corona is everywhere. So today, we are going to learn about animals. I'm aware that in class five, you also learned about animals and you really learned about classification of animals. How did you classify animals in class five? You can just discuss that with the person next to you. You can share with your guardian, with your parent, either your dad or your mother. But I'm aware that in class five, you learned about classification of animals and you classified animals into two main groups. That is one, vertebrates, and the next group was invertebrates. In class five, you learned about vertebrates and you said that vertebrates are animals with backbones. And examples of these animals are the ones we see around our homes. Example, a good example is the cow, that is an animal with a backbone, the goats at home, camels, and so many others. We still have fish which lives in water. In invertebrates, you learned that invertebrates are animals without backbones. And examples of these animals are bees, the flies you can see around us, and all the insects you know. Or all of them lie in the category of invertebrates. Our today's lesson on animals, we are going to learn about animal feeding. Animal feeding. Animal feeding. Animal feeding. As you are aware that the animals we have at home, they have to feed. When I talk of animal feeding, this is the food eaten by the animals we have, and especially the domestic animals we have at home. We can name just but a few. We have the cows, we have the donkeys, we have the camels, we have the goats, we have the sheep, we always rear at home. These animals have to feed. These animals have to feed. And under feeding, we are going to look at types of animal feedings. In other words, the food we give to our animals the types of the different foods we give to our animals at home. I'm very sure if you have ever seen a cow, you know that a cow eats grass. A cow eats grass. Camels also feed on all these plants we have around us. So a good example of the types of animal feeds we have, types of animal feeds. When we talk of animal feeds, we classify these animal feeds into three main categories. And these categories are, one of them is pasture. We have pasture, that is the first category. The second one is fodder crops. We have fodder, fodder crops. And the third one is commercial feed. These commercial feeds have another name which is called conserved. Conserved feeds. Conserved feeds. Let us begin with the first one, pasture. Pasture. What do you understand by the meaning of pasture? A pasture is an area set aside for growing animal feeds. A pasture is an area set aside for growing animals' feeds, like the legumes, the grass we always give to our animals, and many other more. And under pasture, we have two types of pastures. We have the pure strand, and we also have the mixed pasture. Mixed pasture. In the first one, in pure stand, in pure stand, uh, sorry, this is pure stand. 
In pure stand, as the name suggests, this is whereby we grow one type, one type of animal feeds. You can decide in this area, you are going to grow one type of animal feeds, like the grass only. So that after some time, the animals will come to feed on the grass. But in mixture, in mixed pasture, here you have to grow several or different types of feeds. You can have the legumes being grown there. You can still have another area set aside for grass and so many. So you find that in mixed pasture, there are different types of feeds, but in pure stand, we only have one type of feed. The next one is fodder crops. Fodder crops. What are fodder crops? You can just discuss with the person next to you what are fodder crops. Fodder. When you hear the word fodder, what do you understand by that term? Fodder crops, these are feeds which are grown. Then after some time, they are cut and given directly to our animals. Like when we plant the napier grass. Napier grass. After planting the napier grass, you don't take the animal to feed on the grass directly. But you have to cut this feed, keep it, uh, take it home and feed to the animal where you are keeping the animal from. We don't feed animals on napier grass directly on the farm. So you have to cut this feed, then later on feed it to the animal. Then the last one is conserved feeds. Conserved feeds. As the word says, conserve. To conserve is to preserve. To conserve is to preserve. These are feeds which are harvested and kept for later use, especially when we have drought. When we have drought, this is the high time you can uh, feed animals with conserved feeds. So, conserved feeds, we have two examples of them. We have the silage, we have the silage, and we still have the other one called hay. Silage, this is fodder preserved when green. When you talk of silage, it is preserved when green. And you have to differentiate between the two, between silage and A, because it is highly tested in the exams. So silage, this one is fodder which is preserved for future use while it is green. But when you talk of hay, hay you have to cut the fodder, then dry it and preserve it for later use. So my dear boys and girls at home, I would like to refer you to Spotlight, page 41. You will see more examples of the feeds we have talked about. Try to come up with summary notes and try to attempt the exercise at the back or at the end of the topic. You are teacher Stephen, and before I end the lesson, I still have to sanitize myself. Remember, you have to keep healthy. Corona is real. Corona is everywhere. You have to sanitize your hands, wash thoroughly, avoid mixing up with people, ensure you limit your traveling, avoid groups, and most important, don't touch your face. Thank you. Have a nice holiday.